today on Divorce Court. When Wayne drinks, he's very obnoxious. If I had one drink, she would think I'm an alcoholic. Because of Wayne's drinking, I have lost my apartment, some very good friends of mine, my family career. I took a bullet for him. He needs to get help. I thought about marrying Linda, but I don't believe that we're ready yet. When we have arguments, it's like fire versus fire between Linda and I. You just can't put it out. If he doesn't change, then we're gonna be over. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Linda Smith and Wayne Covington. The two of you have been together for a year and a half. You do not have any children together, but your relationship is in trouble. Ms. Smith, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here in divorce court today? Well, Wayne has a huge drinking problem and it's hurting other people and he doesn't realize it's hurting himself. Like, for instance, um, eight months ago, we had went to a party in Stockton, mm -hmm. and it was loud and crazy. Boy, sure, it's a lot going on. <laughs> yes. And so, Wayne, he was drunk, and he was being loud, saying, oh, I can take on anybody, um, just start causing problems. And one guy came up to him and had a shotgun to his face. And so, he hit him in the head, and after that, like, I was trying to The other him. guy hit him in yeah, the head. Yeah, the other guy hit him in the head, and then a fight broke out. And so after that, like, I tried to calm everybody down. One of the guys turned towards me and shot me in my foot. And after that, I saw them, like, the guys, they tried to get in the way, it's like, tried to beat him up some more, and I kind of took that opportunity to get help. And when I was... Shot in the foot, and you went to get help? Yes. And you were drunk, <laughs> scuffling. <laughs> Is yeah. this true, Mr. Covington? Correct. Okay. Do you remember that incident, or is this not... I remember. There's nothing in there. You remember I that? Remember. You remember her getting shot? <laughs> it happened. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. Did you feel badly about that? I did. I did feel bad. Yeah. Do you remember what you were beefing about? Not that it matters, because you were um, drinking. First of all, I, I don't consider myself a drunk, and um, I did get drunk that night, but we shouldn't have been there in the first place. Um, when Why she, shouldn't you have been there in the first place? I told her I had a real bad gut feeling about going. So, you had a, you, so why didn't you just not go? She, she was the only... I, I was the only ride she had there. Uh-huh. So it's her fault. It's her fault while we were there. <laughs> but it's my fault why I was... If you had a bad feeling about going someplace, wouldn't it behoove you to stay sober while you were there because you had thoughts that things might not turn out well? It, <laughs> I'm just asking. It was a party, though. It you know, was a everybody party, was though. Wrecked. Do you think you have any problem with alcohol at all? Well, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. How much do you drink on well, I, average? I used to drink. I don't drink anymore. Okay. You don't drink at all? At all. When you were drinking, how much were you drinking? I would consume maybe a pint, pint a day, maybe, every other day. A pint of what? A pint of beer? Like, uh, Remy. Oh, R a Remy. pint of cognac. Yeah, cognac. Well, that's a lot of cognac, isn't it? Yeah, I was fine, but I felt fine. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Miss Smith, do you, do you agree with him that he has, in fact, quit drinking, or do you, is he telling me an untruth? He's telling you an untruth, Your Honor. How often does he drink now? Well, he still drinks every day, but, like, it's not, like... He doesn't get it's drunk every, every day. day. Well, not drunk every day. It's, like, more of a tipsy type... It's kind of hard to explain, Your Honor. <laughs> okay. Like, it's for instance, like, when after my shooting, right. after, after I got shot in my foot, right. he, um, I was in a wheelchair and they sent me home. He had his friends over and he was drinking and they were being loud and obnoxious. Right. And so I woke up. I was on very heavy medication. Sure, yeah, <laughs> so you've been to wake up, So from, to be woke up from that, you know, so, so I wheeled myself to the room, and I see his friends there. Your Honor, I do not like his friends at all, and I told him so many times I don't like his friends. Um, they always be disruptive. They, one of them pretend to have a seizure and drool and spit on my floor when my son plays. And so I told him, I'm like, I told you I don't want them here. He told me to go wheel myself back to the bed. And so... Was he drunk? Yes, he was. Mr. Cuffing, did that occur? Yes, it did. Okay. Uh, you say that you haven't been drinking recently. Recently. Okay. 
Have you been drinking since you come to, came to L.A. to come to this show? Yes. <laughs> so how <laughs> and, and And did you get drunk here in L.A.? No, I did not. But you've been drinking here. Was yeah. he drunk? Yes. <laughs> That's not true. You know, if I've heard about it, something went wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I know you weren't at the hotel playing Parcheesi. No, I, I wasn't. <laughs> I was not drunk out here. You were not drunk? No. Not, not at drunk. all? Not at all. But you're still drinking? Time to time. Yeah. How much did you have to drink here in L.A.? Um, I just had a few beers. A few beers? Like two or three. Two or three? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she can't even stop laughing. You see, Your Honor, any any beer, like it could be one beer, that's a lot to her because she really doesn't drink. Uh -huh. So she doesn't know. She knows more than you do because you don't know what you do when you're drunk. You don't know how you because drunks always think they're a whole lot more reasonable than they are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Mr. Covington. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean... I didn't mean it like that. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm having a bad day today. I really am. Just... I find you disarmingly charming. Mr. Covington, what is your biggest problem with Miss Smith? She makes it hard for me to trust her because she's so social. Everywhere we go, she knows somebody. No matter what city is in, she knows somebody. Like, I'm surprised she didn't know anybody out here. You know. Yeah. And, and, and give me an example of something that that caused you to be upset or concerned about how sociable she is. Well, most recently, I caught her talking to her ex. The thing is, at that time, I was still debating if I still wanted to be with Wayne or not because of the action he had caused. Um, like, accusing me of having someone inside of my room when it was just, like, a black sheet. Uh -huh. He had me video call him and stuff. He, uh, had me video chat him. He told me to let him see the whole entire room. And, um, he thought my son was some other guy, which he's only two years old, so... So, I, I take it we have an issue with jealousy, Ms. Smith, and that's where I'm going to go next. I'm going to find out what you, your concerns are in that regard, and then we're going to ask Mr. Covington why he's concerned. You know, I took that as disrespect. So, they left, and then me and her got into an argument about that. Right. And then that's when she broke my phone. Right. So, then I got mad, and so I broke her laptop. <laughs> so, it's just, it, we just go back and forth. So, Ms. Smith, is Mr. Covington generally a jealous person, or is he only jealous when he drinks? What's he's, going on with that? Wayne, he's generally jealous. Like, um, I had um, a family friend. He is gay, and I've been knowing him since way before Wayne. And he don't want me hanging out with him because he feels like he's faking being gay. <laughs> okay, Mr. Covington. <laughs> so tell me about that, Mr. Covington. Do you, do you believe? No, no. Do you, you, do you believe that this guy is fake gay? No, or that's what? not even it. Huh? That's not even it. Oh, you tell me what it is then. It's that she has more guy friends than I do. Uh -huh. And so it just, it makes me curious because she says they're gay and I might see them. They don't seem gay to me, so what am I supposed to think right. when she has right. more right. Right. guy friends than I do? You haven't even met them. I have met them. No, you haven't. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, me and my family friend, we talked this, so we said, hey, let's do a double date. Me and your boyfriend and me and mine. I was like, okay, um, that sounds cool. I talked to him about it. Oh, I don't want to. Why not? Because that's just weird. That's Mr. what he Covington, did, did that occur? Yes, it did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me, Mr. Covington. It's just, it's just, I'm, not, I'm not mad or anything. It's just, you're, just, you're a very interesting guy. Um, and we've been talking about you for a while, so I'm going to stop talking about you, and I'm going to ask you to talk about her. What is your number one issue with Miss Smith? Her, her being so social, her yeah. being so outgoing. Outgoing and social. I'm I just not used to that. She also has an anger problem. Yeah, she does have an anger problem. Tell me about that. I call it feisty. Okay. 
she's explosive. We can have any argument, and she's ready to fight. She throws things. She reminds me of, like a kid in like a a ball pit, you know, mm -hmm. like a like a toddler. Yeah, give me an example of something she went off about that just really wasn't worth it. My friends being over, we were having a party. Mm -hmm. And um, we were being noisy, playing video games and drinking. And instead of her coming like an, like an adult woman and pulling me aside and telling me to quiet down or mm -hmm. leave, she exploded in front of my friends, embarrassing me. And so, you know, I took that as disrespect. So. They left, and then me and her got into an argument about that. Right. And then that's when she broke my phone. Right. So then I got mad, and so I broke her laptop. <laughs> so it's just, it, we just go back and forth. And... Miss Smith, did, when, you, when you came out, when you wheeled yourself out there in that wheelchair, <laughs> after having gotten shot, gotten shot in the foot, did you come out all crooked and with an attitude? Yes, Your Honor, but it wasn't... It's like I've been told him that I do not like his friends. Um, his friends has always been, like, disrespecting me, mm -hmm. and he allows it. Mr. Covington, just on a pra as a practical matter, you know, you got the woman shot a couple of weeks beforehand. <laughs> you know she doesn't like your friends, and you bring them over, and you're loud and raucous when she's trying to recover from a gunshot wound. Wouldn't you think that, hey, Maybe this is a time to behave myself a little better because she's been through a lot. Mm, no, because <laughs> she was still up. She was still up, and I tried to get her to join the party instead of, you know, being in there alone. How old are you, Mr. Covington? 25. <laughs> you're 25? And you're 24? Yes. You're awfully young. Yes, ma'am. Let me ask you a question, Ms. Smith. Yes. And I want you to take a moment to think about it before you answer. If all this has gone wrong in the first year of being with him, what is it you're hoping to accomplish? You're 24 years old, you got a kid, you're hanging on to a guy who drinks too much. Now, see me, if I was your mother, I'd pop you in the back of the head and tell you to leave. That's what I would do. So you gotta answer me, Miss Smith. What is it you're hoping to accomplish? Because I gotta know which way to steer this boat. Getting him some help from his drinking, because mm -hmm. it's a really big problem. Mm -hmm. And he's hurting those who actually really care for him mm -hmm. and who's trying to be there. Okay. I also understand that you two have financial difficulties. Who wants to tell me about those? First of all, she's not employed. I'm the only one that's employed. I give her money weekly. Mm -hmm. And we see each other maybe once a week. And when I see her, she's broke. And so that, that kind of irks me mm -hmm. because she spends it on hair extensions, nails, jewelry, all a bunch of stuff that she could be saving for us to get us a place. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it's all on me. And she complains about me being an alcoholic, and I feel like she's a shopaholic. Gotcha. Ms. Smith, uh, are you, you're unemployed, correct? Yes, I'm a student. You're a student? Yes. You're, so you're going to school? Yeah, and I have, like, a little part-time job. A little part-time job. You guys are not living together? No. Um, does he help support you? Yes, sometimes. And I do, too. We, it's like a half and half. He supports me, and then I support him when he doesn't have it. Right. So you guys are just... Are you spending <laughs> money on things like hair and nails and weave and all that? You see, Your Honor, I spend my money on, like, yeah, clothes, hair, wig, uh, nails. Uh, that's because the type of job that I do, I have to look nice. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? I work in the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, <laughs> he. You don't have to have nails for that. <laughs> You really don't. Right. I know, that's just pampering me because, you know, I'm a single mom, so it's like... She I, likes to look good. My yeah. nails, at least, I mean... Nails and hair, all that. You can, you can always look presentable but without spending I, hundreds of dollars on other people's hair and stuff like that. I understand. You really that, can. But it's like, I spend also to make myself happy, but I don't only spend for myself. I spend for my son, too. I buy him diapers, I buy him clothes, I buy him everything he oh, needs. yeah. 
but you can't afford, the, the diapers are necessary, the hair is not. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. You're 24 years old, you got a kid, you're hanging on to a guy who drinks too much. Now see me, if I was your mother, I'd pop you in the back of the head and tell you to leave. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> and I mean, I know this isn't what you came here for, but I, oh, I sit here, you've been here together for a year. You got nothing invested in one another. Hey, you got a bullet in the foot. You got somebody else's kid. You're going to school. Why fight to stay in a relationship with someone who has a drinking problem? Are you with me? Yes. I'm not mad at you, Mr. Covington, but are you with me? Yes. I know you guys aren't gonna leave one another, so I'll give you the advice you came for. But that's the advice I wanna give. You two are very lovely young people. I'm so excited that you're in school. I'm so excited that, you know, you've got a job and that you're working and that you do things. You need to get a handle on this liquor thing. Your liver, by the time you're 40, gonna be hollering at you, talking about what the heck did you do that to me for? And, I, you know, I'm not gonna say I went through school, didn't drink or whatever. That I, I did do all of that kind of stuff, but you gotta have it at a level where you could control it because it gets ahead of you before you know it. And if you're in a situation where you believe that you're 10 feet tall and bulletproof when you drink, you can get hurt or get somebody else hurt. So your drinking is not just a problem for your liver. It's not just a problem because it could come in an addiction. It's a problem because it can get you killed because you're the kind of drunk who starts trouble and you can't accommodate it. What I would do would put down a cognac, you know, go to school in addition to working. I wouldn't worry about having a girlfriend right now. Really isn't that important, you know what I mean? Be because you have a life that has to be of a certain size and a certain breadth and a certain depth in order to be anything. I, I, I don't want you to have old married people problems as young people. Do you know, you with me? And Ms. Smith, I'm telling you, don't be one of these women who hangs on to a dude because it's the dude that you got and you feel like if you let him get away, you know, your life goes with him. You know what I mean? Don't get a dude that's a problem. They're gonna be enough trouble later on, trust me. <laughs> but don't get a guy that's a problem out the gate. You got other things to do, you have got other places to be, you, you, you've gotta catch up to square one because you got a little person on your hip. I don't think y'all need to be together. I'm not gonna give you advice on how to stay together because I don't think that's something you need to do. Everybody looking, looking to get hooked up, you should get looked Look to get educated, lift it up. You know what I'm saying? And I know you came to divorce court, and I know you love each other, and I know you're not gonna pay attention to a word I said, but I feel better because I said it. This matter is a jerk. <laughs>After listening to the judge today, um, it really opened up my eyes. I'm going to give him one more chance after this. If he messes up, then I'm just gonna go forth and continue on my life. The judge says I shouldn't be in a relationship, but you know what? I wanna prove her wrong and just do it how I can.